Hello everybody. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you my opinion on Roe vs. Wade and abortion in general. So let's start by talking about what's my opinion on abortion. So off the bat, I am absolutely, absolutely opposed to late term abortion you know, uh, nine months, or anything above nine months, ten months, nine months, uh, eight months, pretty much, honestly, anything past a month, maybe two months, I'm absolutely opposed to abortion, okay? And let me tell you why I'm against late-term abortion, first of all. So, I have a son, and I was there the day he was born, right when he was born, and... I was there, you know, with my son, right when he was born, seen him, held his little hands, you know, look at him, talk to him, etc., etc., right? And this is, remember, this is all part of my opinion. Me looking at my son, I'm looking at him, he's a little human being. He's a little human being, he has heart, lungs, all these types of things, you know, he's crying, so he has some kind of emotion, scared, or whatever it may be, you know, he's a little human being, and I love him. Okay, and so I can't imagine going back 24 hours from then, from when he was born and I saw him, when he's still in the womb, 24 hours, just 24 hours before that, and somehow it being legal to kill him. Abortion, as they call it, they call it abortion. That would be a late-term pregnancy, because late-term pregnancy, they allow, if, if it was the law, that late-term uh, pregnancy was allowed, that's right up to the point of the child being born. Right before the child is born, they could still, you know, abort the pregnancy, as they call it. I just can't, in my mind, imagine, imagine killing my child, son, daughter, whatever. It just, it boggles my mind that anyone would, would even consider that. Because I don't see how, again, going back just 24 hours before they're born, that they're somehow less of a human that they don't have their organs, that they don't have their emotions, so on and so forth. That's why I'm very, very opposed to late-term abortion, because in my opinion, it is a human being, it is a person, and do they deserve other rights as a human being or a person? Maybe, maybe not, whatever, but at the very least, they deserve the right to life at that point in their development, in the womb, or whatever. Now, obviously the question is, uh, at what point, like I said, you know, what point would you consider him, uh, you know, a human, a person? At, some people will say at conception, you know, some people say no, you know, uh, later on, a month, two months, three months. I'm not going to get into the details of that because I don't know. I don't know when you would, when did my, my son become my son, you know, when was he more than just, you know, um, a fetus or whatever. When did you know? When when would I personally consider him a human being? I don't know the answer to that question. Okay, but definitely any kind of late term, definitely anything past five months, even four months, whatever, totally opposed to. You. Okay. Now let's go to the opposite um, extreme. Let's go to right after a, a, a woman becomes pregnant. Um, say she has sex with some guy, and um, she finds out. You know, however fast they could find out, definitely a week or two weeks, however fast, maybe a few days, you know, depending on what test. They find out right away, okay? And she wants to do an abortion. I'm not totally opposed to that because there is that question, is, is it a human yet? Is it any kind of person? Should it have person rights? It is so early in the development. Does not have organs yet. The child does not have you know, brain, nothing, you know, um, that, that could be described as a human being, I would be less opposed to it at that point. So these are the extremes. Trying to have a, a, an abortion at, you know, nine months, right before the child is born, murder, in my opinion, okay? Want to have an abortion sometime, like, right after you find out, say, within a couple weeks or so? I don't know, okay? So now we get into the law. Okay, forget Matt's opinion on it. 
should it be against the law? Okay, so now this is where we get into Roe versus Wade and, you know, basically the government telling you either you can or cannot get an abortion, right? But now we get in these weird scenarios like, okay, well, what if it's not just, oh, I, you know, I had sex with somebody, I don't want to have a baby with them, so I'm going to get an abortion. Like people bring up, what if the person is raped? Okay, what if it's a child that's raped? What if it's a 12-year-old child that's raped? Ten-year-old. I've heard uh, stories of, I think, girls as young as five years old who are raped by their father and they end up becoming pregnant. Are you going to tell me that you're going to force, if you say you are, against abortion, you're going to tell me that you're going to force a five-year-old, say who was raped by her father, to have a baby because you're against abortion? It seems absurd to me. It seems absurd to me that you would be that extreme, that you would um, be unwilling to even have... You know, a young child doesn't have to be five, ten years old, or any woman that's raped. You know, she didn't want to be with that guy whatsoever. She was raped. She happened to get pregnant. Say she found out right away. She got tested the next day. Found out she's pregnant. She wants to get rid of that baby. You're telling me that she can't get abortion? That's nuts to me. That doesn't make sense to me. That's illogical to me. Okay? And again, on the opposite end of the spectrum, it's also equally as nuts to me where a woman is um, just about to get birth sometime in, say, the nine-month period, and that someone would think that it's okay to have an abortion, to murder, again, murder that child at that point. Both of those extremes, to me, are illogical and irrational, okay? So, as far as law is concerned, I don't agree with an absolute ban on abortion. Just totally saying, um, no, you can't get an abortion under any scenario, for any circumstances whatsoever. That's ridiculous to me. Again, because there are those extreme cases, women are raped, or, um, you know, there are the cases, okay, what if it is late term, but the woman's uh, health is jeopardized? Maybe she, uh, the doctor literally says, hey, if uh, you continue with this pregnancy, you're going to die. And maybe it is late term, five, six months, seven months, eight, nine months, whatever. I wouldn't necessarily consider it murder at that time, even though I don't want the child to be killed, equally so I don't want the mother to die either. There's weird scenarios, there's very extreme scenarios that um, it would be hard for me, even me to weigh in on. I wouldn't know what to do in those situations. But, this, but the point is to say that abortion should just be banned flat out, doesn't matter your reason, I don't want to hear it, it's like putting your fingers in here, I don't care, oh you're raped, blah blah blah, not my problem, you know? That almost seems like something that this is why women get mad. Hey, this is, you know, my body, my choice, whatever. It almost seems like something a guy would do. I don't want to hear it. Oh, you're a rape. You got pregnant. Not, not my problem, right? And it's childish. It's absurd for a blanket, you know, no abortions, okay? But on the opposite end of that, I also think it's absurd to say, yeah, absolutely abortion is legal. Anybody can have an abortion at any time during the pregnancy, again, up to, you know, right before the child is born. That's equally absurd. So I'm against that in my personal opinion, but I'm against that also in as far as the law is concerned. Like I said, forget my opinion. As far as the law is concerned, yes, I think it should be illegal to have late-term abortion, um, except maybe weird special uh, scenarios. I could even give you another one, a special scenario, where even maybe a late-term abortion might. Okay, say a 12-year-old girl is raped by whoever, right? And she doesn't want to come out and say she was raped because she's scared of the consequences, whatever. She's scared to come out. And she, she, so she goes about her life, doesn't know that she's pregnant or not. And a few months later, maybe four months later, she starts to show signs. She realizes it, then finally tells somebody, hey, I was raped. You know, her family flips out, whatever. And at that point, she does want to have an abortion. Right? But now we're getting to the late term part, four or five months by the time they realize, oh, we need to get to the doctor, schedule an appointment, whatever you got to do. Again, that's one of those odd scenarios that I would necessarily, I would not necessarily be against abortion. Again, because she's raped, you know, she's underage, she, she doesn't have the mentality of, hey, I, I just got raped, I need to go check and see if I am pregnant. You know, she's a child, 12 year old is a child. And so there's all kinds of uh, special circumstances where, an abortion, I would, in my opinion, I would think an abortion might be not the right thing to do, but just like 
in, in their choice, if that's their choice, then for them it's right. If they think, if that family, if that girl or whoever thinks this is the right thing to do, then that's what they should, that's their decision. I don't think the government should get involved in situations like that, okay? But I do think the government should get involved, and that's uh, um, why I'm opposed to late-term abortion. The government should get involved and say things like late-term abortion and say, yeah, this should be illegal, just like murder is illegal, or just like beating someone up is illegal. There are certain cases where the law needs to step in and say, yeah, this is against the law because this is wrong. You're eight months in, this child is essentially fully developed. We could even like bring the baby out now and you know, he could survive on his own. Yeah, it's against the law to kill that child. So that's my general opinion on that. Basically, that, like I said, the extremes shouldn't be allowed. Abortion as a whole shouldn't just be flat outright banned for any reason, but also it shouldn't be the case where, oh yeah, anyone could have an abortion for any reason, you know, how far along you are, whatever it be. I'm against both those extremes. Um, so, you know, it should be allowed, special circumstances. Who makes that decision? I don't know. Between the doctor, the family, um, the law, if the law comes in and says, okay, abortion is allowed, but only up to a month. Or longer if there are special circumstances, like I said, if that 12-year-old girl is raped. Okay, something like that. Whatever the, the specifics are, should be sorted out, but it shouldn't be blanket banned, and it shouldn't be blanket all the way allowed. Okay, now as far as Roe versus Wade, that... People kind of are getting freaked out about that. But all of that is basically is the federal government putting their hands up and saying, we don't want anything to do with it anymore. It's up to the states. The, the federal government's not saying that abortion is allowed anymore, but the federal government is also not saying that abortion is not allowed anymore. The federal government's not making laws like, oh, if you have an abortion, you're going to go to federal prison. No, that's not the case. It's saying that it's up to whatever state you live in. You live in California, Texas, Wyoming, whatever, it's up to that state, not our business anymore. And so people are getting freaked out like there's this, like all of a sudden there's this federal ban on abortion. No, it's up to the state that you live in. And now I'm going to give you a secret. If you don't live in the United States, I'm going to give you a secret about the United States. We're not very united, okay? And this is why I'm, I'm for them repealing Roe versus Wade. So, I've lived in different states before, and you go from state to state, and the laws in some states are way different. You know, you go from, say, California to Wyoming, or to Texas, or New York, wherever, you know, the laws can be, like, completely different, whether it's for driving, or for things like abortion, gun rights, so on and so forth. Laws are, like, completely different. So, we are not, the United States, United States, we're not united in our laws. Definitely, 100%. And this this abortion thing is just another case of that. Some states are going to continue to allow abortion. Some are going to outright ban it. And so, as far as Roe v. Wade is concerned, I'm glad basically the federal government is getting out of it because I think the federal government should more and more get out of basically telling states what should be legal in your state, what should not be legal in your state because we're already so divided as states. You know, anyone who's ever travel in the United States, whether you live here or not, you know, you go from somewhere like, again, like California to Wyoming, and then you go to New York, completely different place, almost seems like different countries, especially you go from like Wyoming to Hawaii, different climate, different laws, you know, gun laws and whatever, driving laws, whatever it may be. And so we're already, forget the United thing, we're not united, we're divided. And every year it seems like uh, our, the states are becoming more and more divided. And so, it basically, it just makes sense that real, um, the federal government is like, we don't want anything to do with this. Throw it to the states. You guys figure it out. And so, I'm for that. I'm, 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 I'm glad that they got rid of the Roe v. Wade. It's like, let the states choose for themselves. And I'm giving another secret. I'm going to give you another secret. Because, you, can, you know, someone's going to say, yeah, but it's not fair. Like, say, you, say you're pro-abortion and you live in a state. Say you're from Utah. You live in Utah, born and raised in Utah, and you're for abortion. You think that women should be able to have the right to abortion. All of a sudden, Utah, blanket, no, you can't have an abortion anymore. Oh, that's not fair to women. Now, if they want an abortion, they have to go out of state, right? Okay, here's the secret. The secret is, I'm telling you, listen to this, listen to this. This Roe versus Wade and a lot of laws in the United States, even throughout the world, a lot of laws in the United States, you know who those laws are for? Poor people. 
peasants like me, maybe like you. These rules aren't for rich people because I'm going to tell you why. Rich people, they're not confined by borders. Say, say you're, say again, let's use Utah. You, you live in Utah, born and raised there, but you don't have a lot of money. You want to get an abortion, you're pro-abortion, and you just don't have money to even drive out of state. You live too far to walk out of state. You can't go on and get an abortion. So as a poor person, you're affected by this law because you can't do anything about it. You can't, you know, get in your car and go drive to another state. You can't get in a plane and go fly to a different country where abortion is legal. But who can? Rich people. Rich people aren't affected. You think rich people are going crazy now about Roe vs. Wade? I don't care if a rich, say you take a, a, a rich person, they're worth $100 million. And I don't care if they're for or against abortion. You think they're like, oh no, I can't get abortion anymore. Of course they can still get an abortion because they have gas money and cars and planes and whatever they, whatever uh, vehicles uh, they have access to to get out of state, to get out of country, that you could ban abortion totally in every state in the United States. You think a rich person is going to be affected? No, they just go to a country where it's legal. Oh, hey, honey, uh, you know, a, a, a rich wife tells her rich husband, you know, she just got pregnant, she wants an abortion. Hey, honey, let's go on vacation to this country where they know that abortion is legal. That's all they do. They go to this country, they do have a little vacation, and she gets her abortion. And so that's the irony of all this. The majority of, of laws in the whole world, let alone the United States, is they affect poor people. That's who it's hurting. That's all the people on the news and all these people where you hear about other people complaining about it. It's because they're poor. And because when you're poor, you're affected by stuff like this. You can't move. You know, let's say um, gun rights, taxes, whatever it is. Look at Joe Rogan. For those of you who know Joe Rogan, you know, the podcaster. Someone who is worth $100 million. He was in California, born and raised in California, like me. I don't like the laws here. What does he do? Go moves to Texas. Laws don't apply to rich people. They just go somewhere else where they do like the laws. The whole globe is, is, is their playground. They, you know, they could pick and choose. Oh, I like the laws of this country or that country or this state or that state. And they go there. All the people in California complain about taxes or all the people in whatever state complain about this or that. It's because you're poor. Because I'm poor. I'm stuck in California because I'm poor. Again, I don't have a private jet. And I don't have money to go just buy another house in another state or another country. And that's the irony of this whole thing. This whole freaking thing about Roe vs. Wade, this law, that law. It's all for poor people. Because if you're rich, you just get in your plane. To, uh, see you later. So, it's the crappy thing, you know? But anyhow, that's my opinion on this whole abortion thing, whatever. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you very much for watching. And have a great day.